Okay, then last time we were uh, looking at um, a model of a park bench, uh, and we modeled it just for the purposes of global um, stability, um, global static equilibrium. We modeled it as a rectangular cuboid, um, and we said that under various forces and we uh, adopted a uh, coordinate system where we took y in the vertical direction x in the horizontal direction and then z um, in in the to the front of the bench uh, which we modeled here so if you remember uh, we had a, a model, our, our bench was actually in here somewhere, um, but we, we uh, simplified it to a, a rectangle for the purposes of global stability for checking um, our static equilibrium. And we looked at forces acting in the vertical direction, in the y direction, and we said that they had to do any anything acting in the positive direction had to be balanced by a force acting in the downwards direction, such that this plus this added up to zero. So we got um, sigma of the forces in the vertical direction, which is the y direction. So the sum of those forces comes to zero, and so everything adds up to zero. And we also said that similarly. In the orthogonal oxy axes at x and in the uh, z direction if we had forces for this system to be in static equilibrium so for it to be stationary um, uh, and not be accelerated in any direction under a an imbalanced force we had sigma forces in the x direction comes to zero and the sum of the forces in the z direction comes to zero. Okay and those were three the the first three equations of static equilibrium that we um, came up with. So we're now going to look at three more equations of static equilibrium and those equations of static equilibrium concern uh, couples or moments that act uh, on this body. And again, we can split those into three dimensions and we can consider uh, couples or rotations. So we can have a, a combined force or two forces acting equally and oppositely, which have some distance apart is, is a couple. Uh, and that gives rise to no translational uh, acceleration, but a, an angular acceleration. So a, a tendency for the thing to rotate. Um, so, for example, we could have a force acting on the, the back of the bench at its highest point, And that's for equilibrium, which would be in the Z axis. Uh, we would have a resistance to that coming from uh, the friction of the floor or if the legs were bolted to the floor the, the connection with the floor would give rise to an equal and opposite reaction um, at the bottom of the bench. Now those are separated by a, a distance and therefore we would tend to get a rotation about the x-axis so we would tend to get a rotation about this axis in that direction, a clockwise direction. And again, we use a right hand rule so that if we're moving along the X axis, we'll get a clockwise rotation. That is our sign convention. Again, we talked about conventions in the last uh, video. So the sign convention is a clockwise rotation about the axis uh, in, in the direction so if you, if you imagine a standard clockwise screw thread 
right-handed screw thread. Um, so traveling in the X direction, we would get a clockwise rotation and we would call that a positive uh, moment or a po positive rotation, a positive couple giving rise to that moment. So just to recap again, we've got a force at the top of the bench resisted by a equal and opposite force at the legs of the bench acting in the Z direction. So acting about in the direction of this axis here, giving rise to a clockwise rotation about the X axis. Okay. And we typically represent that uh, as a rotation on the body as we, we draw a, a, an arrow but we'd make it a double arrow in the direction of the axis we're considering so that double arrow uh, is our convention for representing a clockwise uh, rotation a rot positive rotation acting in that sense okay and again for static equilibrium for that bench to not be moving or falling over so for it to be stable uh, for global stability you know, we want to say that it's not sliding so the, we've dealt with that with these first three uh, equations one two and three and we need three more equations which basically say that the sum of the moments about any of those orthogonal axes which can represent a moment in, in any direction in the space. So we resolve um, our, our vectors. These, these are, it's worth saying that these are essentially all vectors. Um, so we have three more equations. So we say the sum of all the moments about the x axis have to add up to zero for the thing to be in static equilibrium. So in other words, for the bench not to be rolling over forwards, um, the sum of all the moments in the y direction have to equal zero. So again, that would be rotation uh, going clockwise in the positive y direction. So that would be going about that direction there. Um, so the sum of all the moments in the y direction are equal to zero and the sum of all the moments in the z direction equal to zero. Now these are free vectors. Um, we, we, we'll, if, if you look back at structures from level four, first year undergraduate level, um, a, a torque is it gives rise to a moment, and a moment in a plane is a free vector. So wherever you consider that point within the plane. Um, it is, is an equivalent moment. Okay, so the sum of those three vectors in the x direction add up to zero. Sum of those three vectors in the in the y direction add up to zero, and the sum of the moments, the three vector moments in the z direction add up to zero. So now we have uh, a total of um, four. Uh, sorry, six equations so that one's four this one's five and this one is six okay um and those six equations are equations of static equilibrium which represent uh the global stability of this structure part bench in our case um such that all these uh moments and all the horizontal forces in the x y and z direction add up to zero now in the first year you looked at these without going into the full depth of looking at uh, how they were derived in a three-dimensional system uh, but in typically what we would do in level four so the first year of undergraduate level would be look at planar structures so structures that we could consider to act just in that single plane. So the, the, the X, Y plane, for example. So for example, if we, if we consider that as a, as a plane now, the X, uh, sorry, let's do this the right way around. Y and X using the coordinates, um, coordinate system that we've chosen. 
convention. We could, for example, consider a small part of this structure. And we, instead of doing a global analysis for stability, we might want to look at a bending analysis of this plank in the bench, which acts as a beam. OK, so it is a three dimensional plank, but to simplify our model further, and we talked about simplifying models in the last uh, section, what you've been used to doing is just considering this as a uh, that this element here as a planar structure and so we've just modeled that as a straight line um, acting in the xy plane um, and that might be the front bench so it's got the, the the supports of the legs here and it has a um, a force that it's got to deal with acting mid-span so that's this force here we model it here and we've got reactions here from the legs um, at these points here but to simplify it we can consider that it's just acting as a line beam within the plane the xy plane so we've reduced it now to two dimensions so in those two dimensions we have forces in in the y direction to consider forces in the x direction to consider there are no forces in the z direction so we can uh, get rid of one of our equations we don't have to consider any forces in in the z direction for this planar simplified modeled structure similarly uh, we are considering moments about any point we talked about it being a free vector so we can consider moments about any point but typically we might want to consider moments about the end of the beam so we might call the ends of the beam a and b and we might consider moments about a but those moments are these moments here in the z direction so if if um this is positive z coming out of the page by our sign convention uh, we, we will have moments which have a positive sense in in that direction there and we can take moments about any point in the plane and because it's a free vector we'll get the same uh, e equilibrium equations to consider but we're not interested in moments about the x direction or about the y direction we're only interested in moments about the z direction for a planar structure so again, these equations mx disappear because there, there are essentially no moments to consider in, in those um, with relation to those uh, equations of equilibrium. So we end up with just three equations of equilibrium for a planar structure, which is perhaps what you're more used to. Uh, but in the more general sense, a three dimensional structure will have all six uh, equations of static equilibrium. Uh, to consider for a statically determinate structure, which is the types of structures that we've looked at up to now in our um, structures theory in level four. So in the next video, then we'll consider um, the global stability of this particular structure. And we'll also talk about statically determinate structures, which are the types of structures that we've looked at in two dimensional um, planar structures here uh, but we'll kind of come on to say how we can consider that for three-dimensional structures and then we'll also start to consider uh, a more typical structure which is a statically indeterminate structure and how we uh, bring in other methods to analyze those types of structures okay thank you